love to study, amen. The more you study the Word of God and the Lord opens things up and shows you different things from His Word, and, and I'm excited for the message tonight. And uh, it started out as something different, and this is how studying works. When you study the Bible, you begin to study verses, you begin to study people, you begin to study chapters, and then what happens is you study about maybe a verse or a person and you, you think that it's going one direction, and then God, through the Holy Spirit, guides your heart and realize that you take an, a completely different turn. And that's what happened with this message. And I'd like to show you and kind of give to you as I was studying. And I didn't even mean I wasn't studying this as for a message. I was studying it more for myself. And I, and I did not see this turn coming. And, and I'd like to walk you through what the Lord did in my heart and, and show you this. Uh, Genesis chapter 38. Genesis chapter 38 is where we're going to begin tonight. This is going to be a combination of a Bible study slash some preaching. So get ready, amen, get your Bible out or your note uh, or your pen. And uh, we've got some verses to go to and show you something. But Genesis chapter 38, and we're going to stand in honor of the Word of God and read one verse. Well, read a couple verses, I apologize. Genesis chapter 38, we're going to start in verse number 1. Genesis chapter 38, verse number 1. Brother Dawson was going to pick on you, but I won't do it, brother. Genesis 38, verse number 1. The Bible says, And it came to pass at that time that Judah went down from his brethren and turned into a certain Adulamite whose name was Hira. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua, and he took her and went in unto her, and she conceived and bare a son, and he called his name Er. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, sure do love you. Thank you for the wonderful day that you've given to us already. Lord, getting to see you work in people's hearts, Lord, this morning, and getting to talk with different people, Lord, and how that, Lord, the messages have worked in their heart. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit of God moving and guiding and directing us. Lord, what a blessing that it is. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for speaking to us. Lord, we don't deserve to have you speak to us. We don't deserve to be convicted. We don't deserve to have the Holy Spirit living on the inside. But I sure am thankful. And Holy Spirit, may we never take for granted that you speak to us. May we never take it and may we never refuse to let you be heard in our hearts and minds. May you bless the message tonight. Would it be a blessing, Lord, to, to, to us, Lord? And Lord, I don't know that anybody would be dealing with this problem, but Lord, I know that I can help prevent, Lord, if may be possible, Lord, down the road. Lord, you know what's coming in, Lord, lives and in, and, in, and in difficulties, Lord, ahead in our lives. If this can be a help to somebody, Lord, I pray that it would be. And just ask that, Holy Spirit, you'd speak through me and use me tonight. Sure do love you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. In this chapter, we're introduced to a, a man named Judah. This man named Judah, if you're familiar with your Bible at all, uh, if not, I'll kind of give you a little bit of a rundown. He is one, he is one of 12 sons of Jacob. The nation of Israel comes from the name of Jacob. God, his name was Jacob. He's the son of Isaac, who was the son of Abraham. Many are familiar with Abraham. And uh, Abraham had a son named Isaac. Isaac had a son named Jacob. Jacob was a deceiver at first, and Jacob did not do well. Uh, he deceived his brother. Uh, he uh, deceived his father-in-law and some different things, and God began to work in his heart and in his mind. And uh, Jacob did a turnaround for the Lord and began to serve God. When Jacob did that, God changed, changed his name to Israel. And, uh, and that's where we get the nation of Israel. It comes from his name, Israel. And so Israel had 12 sons. And if you have ever heard, or if you're familiar maybe with Jewish, uh, my grandmother's a Jew, my great-grandfather's a rabbi, there's 12 tribes in the nation of Israel. Every Jew can trace their heritage back to one of those tribes. They're either of the tribe of Dan or the tribe of Asher or the tribe of Levi. All of those names come from the 12 sons of Jacob, the 12 sons of Israel. So all of the tribes are a name of one of the 12 sons of Israel. Judah is one of those sons. Judah was one of the 12. And we see here in the midst of our story, many are familiar with Joseph. Many are familiar with Joseph, and he was also one of those sons. And we're going to go back into chapter 37, and we're going to see here, uh, chapter 37, verse number 1, it says, And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. 
These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. The lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. And it goes on through the different sons. We see in the middle of what this is, Genesis chapter 38 is actually smacked in the middle of the story of Joseph. Many are familiar with Joseph and how he went into slavery and, and with Potiphar and all of that that went on. This chapter is like a story within this story. And this is what intrigued me. We are reading, you're, if you go through your Bible reading and, and you're reading through Genesis, you have the life of Joseph and you have all that goes on. And then right in the middle is this story about his brother named Judah. Judah goes down and makes some big mistakes in chapter 38. He makes some big mistakes. He gets out of the will of God. He goes and gets a worldly friend. He has children uh, out of wedlock. He has multiple wives. His children die in this chapter. And we're going to go through. It makes just some terrible mistakes. And I thought, man, Judah, what, uh, what happened? You know, what is wrong with this guy? And first I wanted to blame it. If we look down here, uh, verse number 1, it says, And he turned into a certain Adulamite whose name was Hira. Look in verse number uh, 12. It says, and in the process of time, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died, and Judah was comforted and went up into his sheep shears to Timnath, he and his friend, Hira the Adulamite. So I first thought, well, okay, so maybe Judah made these mistakes because of a wrong friend. Amnon had a friend that influenced him to do wrong, and so Judah had a friend that he shouldn't have had. And so I thought he's making some mistakes because of that. And I keep going, and I kept reading. But when you go back to, verse, to, chap, to chapter 37, I believe that you find something interesting. Look in verse 26. It says, And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him. For he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content. Go back again, and you see in verse, uh, chapter 37, verse number 4, or verse number 3, it says, Now Israel, which is Jacob, loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. So these twelve sons of Jacob, uh, eleven of them saw that their father made one, Joseph, he made him a coat of many colors. And the other sons turned and, and looked at Joseph and, and hated him because they looked as that coat was a token of their father's affection and they said, well, my father loves him more than he loves me. Judah was very influential among all of these sons. That's why we saw there in, chap in, verse, uh, in chapter 37, we saw there uh, that Judah was the one that said, let's uh, uh, sell him. I believe that Judah hated his brother the most. That's why we see Judah heading up the brothers. He hated his brother the most. And that envy that he had of his brother... Now, we also know, and I won't go back to it, but there's another verse that talks about Joseph would bring to his father the evil report. You see, the 11 brothers were not doing what they should. Joseph was the only brother, the only son that was serving God, that was doing right. The other brothers were kind of messing around with some things. And, Joseph, and, and Jacob, their father, saw that. And he loved Joseph because of Joseph's love for the Lord, I believe. And then we see Judah envied his brother, I believe, the most, hated his brother the most. He hated him so much that he got rid of him and he sold him as a slave to the Ishmaelites. He sold his brother. Can you imagine hating somebody of your family so much that you would be willing to sell them as a slave? You imagine hating a sibling so much you would sell them as a slave. And in the Bible days, there was no traveling back and forth to, uh, like we have now. Pretty much when they were sold as a slave, you never saw them again. Judah was so, he hated his brother so much that he was willing to sell his brother to never see him again. That's how much hate that, this, that Judah had for his brother. What, what, what terrible. So then we come to chapter 38. And I begin to think, Judah wasn't a friend that influenced him. Judah had a problem. You see, Judah began to envy his brother's relationship with his father. Then his father 
gave Joseph a token of affection through a coat of many colors, and Judah saw that, his envy turned to hate. And then his hatred turns to bitterness. He got so bitter in his heart, hatred set into his heart so much, that you come to verse 38 that says, And it came to pass at that time that Judah went down from his brethren. Now we're going to switch gears real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse number 18. We're going to come back to the story. But Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse number 18, the Bible says, Lest there should be among you man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of these nations. Lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. In Deuteronomy 29, 18, we see that there is a reference here to when we turn away from God and we go and we serve other gods, that what happens is, is that in us there's a root of gall and wormwood. Now we're going to compare this to Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 15. The Bible says, Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Then Acts chapter 8, verse 23, the Bible says, For I, he, uh, this is Paul uh, speaking, uh, or Peter, he says, For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. And then Amos 6, 12 says, Shall horses run upon the rock with one plow there with oxen? For ye have turned judgment into gall and the fruit of righteousness into hemlock. You wrote those verses down. What you, can, what you find from all of those verses is there's some common things. Number one, there's gall. There's gall, and then there's bitterness, and then there's hemlock. In these, in these verses, we see that God compares bitterness, as, and God tells us that bitterness is a root. Bitterness is a root problem that springs up and troubles the life of a Christian, Hebrews 12, 15. And therefore, many be defiled. God says that in a Christian's life, there can come a time when bitterness will set in and will become a problem. And it will spring up, it will grow, and it will trouble you. Listen, bitterness will come into your life whether it's through because of like Judah, whether it's because of a brother, whether it's because of a pastor, whether it's because of a church, whatever it may be, bitterness will come and, call, and will take root in your life. And the Bible says that it will grow and it will spring up and it will trouble you. Like a weed, it will be a problem. Now God compares bitterness to gall. Gall is a poison that is derived from a poisonous plant. Gall is a poison that is mixed together. It comes from a plant and is mixed with something and is given as a poison. It poisons the body. <coughs> Among those verses, we also find the reference to a plant named hemlock. Hemlock is a plant. It's even found in North America. Hemlock is a poisonous plant. We believe through study that gall comes from this plant called hemlock. We believe that it's actually that hemlock plant that they get the poison from and make this poisonous mixture called gall. Bitterness is compared to this. Give you a little information about hemlock, the plant. It's, a, it's the most poisonous plant in North America. It's the most poisonous plant in North America. Its poison can cause you to lose feeling, it can induce vomiting and other effects to your body, which can ultimately result in dehydration, nausea, and then attacks your respiratory system, causing death. If you didn't understand that, Miss Miranda would be happy to explain it to you. <laughs> She's the nurse in the room. So in other words, this poison attacks the sensories of your body. It will induce vomiting, which causes you to be to be di dehydrated, which your body cannot su sustain itself if it's dehydrated, and then it attacks your breathing and causes your breathing to fail and ultimately death. If my information is correct as well, it's the leading cause of death by poisonous plants in the world. 
because what happens is it's commonly confused or looked over because it looks similar to other plants that are harmless. I said all that to say this. There's a reason that in the Bible God compares bitterness to this plant. You see, bitterness is a poison. Bitterness in your life, like hemlock, is easy to look over. The reason that hemlock is a problem is because small children and even adults will look over it and mistake it for something else. And because it's ingested, it poisons the body and before you know it, death occurs. Bitterness is the same way. In a Christian's life, what happens is we look over bitterness as something else. We don't identify its root and then what happens is, is it takes root it springs up and becomes a poison in our life. God compares bitterness as a poison, as the poison of gall. Because just as hemlock is a decision, sometimes by mistake, but it is not something that happens on accident, bitterness is not an accident. Bitterness is a decision that you make to allow into your life. Hatred is a decision that you make to allow into your life. It's, some, it's a poison that you purposefully allow. That's why God says that when it springs up, it troubles you because it's a poison. Now we go back to our story. Genesis chapter 38. I believe that Judah was a bitter man. And I believe that we can see what bitterness does to a Christian in chapter 38. Number one, bitterness will take you away from God. Look where it says, and Judah went down. Can I tell you, when you go away from God, you never go up. You always go down. Whenever you leave the house of God, you never go up in your Christian life. You always go down. Whenever you allow the devil to put a root in your life of bitterness, you'll never go up. You'll always go down. How many Christians have I seen get mad at something, maybe, that, maybe at the pastor or maybe at the church or maybe at a family member, and they leave and get bitter and get hatred in their heart? What happens? Everything goes back down. Bitterness will take you away from God. We as Christians, we want to draw closer to God. We want to draw nigh to God. But when you allow the poison of bitterness to take root, like Judah, it'll take you away from God. Like Jonah, the Bible says, he went down to Joppa, down into the ship, down into the belly of the whale, down at the bottom of the sea. Do you know why Jonah walked away from God? Because Jonah hated the Ninevites. You read your Bible. The Jews hated the Ninevites. They were bitter against them. So Jonah purposefully walked away from God because of bitterness towards somebody else. Judah did the same thing. Judah purposefully walked out on God. And the Bible says he went down. Number two. Bitterness will take you away from your family. Judah went, look in verse number 1, it says he went down from his brethren. Bitterness will cause you to separate from family. Your family will notice there's something different. A husband to a wife will notice something's wrong. A wife to a husband will notice something's wrong. A, a parents to a teenager will notice something's wrong. It will cause you to become distant from family members around you. Bitterness will set you apart from those that you love and those that love you. You listen to your pastor. Bitterness will set in, and I promise you, your family will know it, God will know it, and you will know it. Judah walked out on his family. Judah went away. He said, I can't take it anymore. Notice how Judah got rid of Joseph, but he did not get rid of bitterness. See, Judah walked away from his family and he got rid of Joseph, 
but he couldn't get rid of the problem. Because, my friend, you may take care of it your way, but you'll never be taken care of until you take care of it God's way. Number three, bitterness will attract the wrong friends. Look there in verse number two or verse number one. It says, "And turned into a certain Adulamite, whose name was Hira. He got bitter, so he goes wandering down the path, and he finds a guy named Hira. Hira takes him in, lets him shack up with him, lets him live. Says, "Hey, sure, why not?" Instead of telling him, get your rear back to your family and get right with God, he says, yeah, come on, you stay with me a while. You listen to me, you never have a friend that would let you come and not tell you to get right with God. A lot of teenagers get mad at mom and dad and get mad at their parents and they get bitter. Why all these rules? Why do I got to do this? And you know what happens? They go and they find a friend that's in the world. And those friends in the world, that's why you be careful who your, friend, who your kids' friends are. Because those friends in the world will take your kids. Yeah, you come live with me. Your mom and dad did what to you? That's terrible. I can't believe that. You think I'm a liar. And I can give you lots of teenagers that I've known that they had a friend. But it started with bitterness towards God. It'll attract the wrong friends. People get bitter at God, so they walk out on God, walk out on their family, turn to a worldly friend. They get ungodly friends that give them ungodly advice that cause them to do ungodly things. Listen to me. You be careful who your friends are because even as an adult, you may get bitter at God and you talk to a friend and they tell you, well, I can't believe. Listen, what should have happened is this guy, if he was a friend, should have told Judah to get his rear back up there. Get right with God. Get your rear back to your family. Make it right with your dad. Get your rear back up there. Get on your knees and pray and ask God for forgiveness. But no, he took him in. Bitterness will attract the wrong friends. Number four. Bitterness will lead to sin. Verse number 2, And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite, whose name was Shua, and he took her and went in unto her. Judah was so bitter that he got and turned to a friend, and then he saw a girl. And he said, You know what? I don't care what mom and dad say. I don't care what God says. He says, I'll do my own thing. Notice it never says that he took her to wife like his father did. Jacob served seven years and then got married. Judah just said, I'm going to rebel against God and against everybody. Be careful. Because bitterness in your heart will lead you to sin. And it may not be this sin. But you listen to your pastor, you'll sin. You'll commit adultery. You'll lie to God. You'll get backslidden on God because of bitterness. Then look what happens. Bitterness will destroy your family. Verse number 7. And heir Judah's firstborn was what? Wicked in the sight of God, in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. If you let bitterness stay a problem, and you don't get rid of that bitterness, and you don't get right with God and right with those, then what happens is that breeds to your children. And your children will turn their back and be wicked. It'll destroy your family. You see, bitterness does not just affect you. It'll affect your family. Look at verse number 10. This is Judah's second son. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. Two sons are dead because of bitterness. 
two sons are dead because Judah walked out on God. And he said, I won't get right. Two sons are dead because he hated his brother so much. But really what it was, you see, Joseph had a dream. And God told Joseph through the dream that his brothers would bow to him. Judah said, I will never. What it was, was Judah was not willing to do God's will. Judah said, never will I bow to you. I don't care what your dream says. Because remember what happened, Jacob heard the dream and he listened and he took note of it. Because Jacob knew that there was something to it. Judah got mad and said, never. And walked out on God. Listen to, I, can I plead you that bitterness will destroy your family. Number six, bitterness will cause you to make unwise decisions. In the process of time, in verse number 12, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died. And Judah was comforted and went up into his sheep shearers to Timnath, he and his friend Hira the Adulamite. So what happens is, is Judah's wife dies. So this is a process of time. His wife is dead. Judah's comforted. The wife that Judah tried to take for his son, God killed his son because his son was wicked. And in the Bible days, his wife went to the next son, and he married her, and then if that son died, it just kept going down the line. So how they did it was, is this son got married when he died. She was no longer bound to her son. So in the Bible days, she would marry the next son. Two of sons of Judah had died. Her name was Tamar. She was waiting to marry the next son. Verse 13, and it says, And it was told Tamar, saying, Behold, thy father-in-law goeth up to Timnath to shear his sheep. To save you a, a, a long story a little bit there, what happens is, is she goes and commits adultery with her father-in-law in deceit. And Judah's okay with that. Judah says, sure. He did not realize that it was her because she covered herself to where she hid her face. But Judah commits adultery and doesn't even know it. How sad. You talk about an unwise decision. How terrible. But you know why? Bitterness will cause you to not think straight. Everything that God has ever put in your mind, when bitterness takes root, it troubles you. That poison causes you not to think straight. One of the effects of the plant hemlock is that you begin to lose feeling and you begin to lose consciousness. Bitterness is a poison that will begin to cause you to lose feeling to the Holy Spirit of God. Bitterness is a poison that will cause you to lose consciousness to what would be the right decision. He made unwise decisions. Number seven, bitterness will destroy your future. Look at Joshua chapter 7, verse number 1. Say, Pastor, what do you mean it'll destroy my future? Book of Joshua chapter 7, verse number 1. Many of you are probably familiar. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan... Anybody know the name Achan? For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah. Let me go back to Genesis 38. Look at the very last verse in Genesis 38, verse 30. And afterward came out his brother that had the scarlet thread upon his hand, and his name was called Zara. Achan was the son of Judah. You see, you think bitterness only affects you right now. 
but it goes long past. It's a poison that will affect not only you, but your family. You think, well, it's just my problem. Your children will have that problem. The sins of the father will be visited upon their children. Your children will have bitterness just like you did. Achan turned his back on God and disobeyed just as Judah. It'll destroy your future. Can I tell you, the best thing you can do is get rid of bitterness. You have two options. You can keep it and allow all these problems to, be, to come up or you can get rid of it and give it to God. Because there is a bright side. There is a blessing. When you go back to Genesis 38, you realize Judah had two sons. One was Zerah. The other, his name in verse 29, is Pharez. Jesus was born of the tribe of Judah. Jesus came from the line of Pharez. But you know why? Because you find and you read at the end of Joseph's life when his brothers come and have to get food and all of the story that comes about, you find that Judah goes with his family to take care of his family. All of a sudden, Judah reappears. Somehow in the process of time, Judah got right with his dad. Judah got right with his brothers. And Judah even goes to where he would give his life for one of his brothers. And when Judah finds out that Joseph is alive, there's sorrow. And he wept. And he got right with his brother. The Bible says they hugged. They got right. And Joseph said, you meant it for evil, but God used it for good. But Judah got right with God. Can I tell you, if you have bitterness today, or if one day you begin to see that root spring up, that there's hope because God can still use you. God can still take care of that bitterness, and your family can still be preserved. God will not take away all the punishment because you reap what you sow, but God can heal. God can help. And you can preserve what little maybe that you have. Because see, bitterness is a poison. Like hemlock, bitterness will attack because its ultimate goal is death. Ultimately, bitterness wants to bring death to you spiritually. It wants to bring a stop to everything that you do for God. Everything you've ever dreamed of doing, bitterness wants to bring death to that. Everything you're doing now, bitterness wants to bring a stop to that. But can I tell you, there's hope like Judah that you've made some mistakes and maybe you've allowed bitterness to be that problem. But boy, forgiveness is down the road. Can I tell you how you get rid of hemlock or rid of that poison when you ingest gall or you ingest hemlock? And again, Miss Miranda is probably familiar with it. You have to use charcoal and you have to pump it into your body. And what happens is charcoal absorbs the poison. I've seen it done. It's, a, it's nasty. It's a terrible thing to watch. But when somebody ingests a poison or if you ingest too much medicine that can be, be toxic to your body, they pump into your body through the mouth charcoal. And through the other side, they pump it back out. Charcoal will absorb that poison and get it out. To, get, to take care of bitterness, you realize you're going to have to get an outside agent to help you. You're going to have to pump in God's Word. Realize you're going to have to pump God's Word into you so much that God's Word can absorb bitterness because the Bible says that the Word of God is sharp as a two-edged sword and God's Word can pierce to dividing asunder and God's Word can get that out of there. 
You're going to have to get into God's Word. Boy, you're going to have to read so much Bible. You're going to have to pump so much into you. You've never read that much before in your life. But see, God's Word will get in and the Bible says will increase your faith and can help absorb that. You also, to get rid of bitterness, you've got to treat each symptom. In hemlock, to know the effects of poison, you look for symptoms in, the, in your body. When you begin to see vomiting or you begin to lose conscious or you begin to be nauseated, all of those things are symptoms of what's really going on. Bitterness produces symptoms. You see, getting a wrong friend by Judah, committing all the sin and the things that he did were only symptoms of the root. But you have to treat those symptoms. You have to take care of the sin in your life. You've got to treat the sin. You can't let sin keep going on. The Bible says you've got to take captive your thoughts. You've got to put your body under subjection. So you have to treat those symptoms. The symptom of bitterness is sin. When you begin to have sin in your life. It can be a cause of bitterness. Bitterness can be that root. You're going to have to treat those symptoms. Don't let sin go un, un, uh, uncorrected. You take sin and you correct it. You take those thoughts and you put them under subjection and you take your body and don't let yourself go to where you ought not to go and do things you ought not to do. Don't let sin run rampant in your body. Number three, you've got to get it out of your system. 1 John 1, 9 says, You go to God and confess your sin. And He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Realize you can go to God. You get on your knees. You have bitterness. You get on your knees. And you beg for God's help. And you confess that to God. You tell God, God, I've been bitter. And you confess that to God. And you get forgiveness. The Bible says that God is faithful and just. God will help you. But you've got to get forgiven by God. Yes, you're saved. You're, the punishment of sin, hell, is taken care of. You're born again. But you're going to have to get it out. You're going to have to confess it with your mouth. You're going to have to tell God. And then last, you have to be willing to forgive those who have wronged you. Ephesians 4, 32. Last verse. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. You have to be willing to forgive. You let God, you go confess it to God. God will forgive you. And then God says, just like I've forgiven you, now you turn around and forgive them. You take those things, I promise you, you'll see a change. And God can preserve the future. Yes, you're going to see the punishment Yes, you're going to see the result. You're going to reap what you've sown. But God can preserve something. Don't let bitterness be a problem. I don't believe that it is a problem, but I believe this is one of those messages that we take to heart. Because you mark my words as a pastor, the devil will come in and the root of bitterness can spring up at any time can spring up in anybody's heart, can spring up in anybody's life, and it will begin to trouble you. You'll begin to go, I don't know what's wrong with me. But it starts with submission to God. See, Judah just didn't want to submit to God's will. You've got to submit to God. What is it that God in your life has spoken to you about? That you've told God, I won't do it. Maybe God's spoken to you and you told God, no. God, I'm not going to do it. It can happen. And if you've told God no, then what you've not realized, you've tasted the gall of bitterness. Don't let it be a root. Don't let that spring up. What do you do with weeds? You nip them at the bud. You yank them out before they become a problem. Because what happens is they grow and grow 
and grow. And before long, you have a yard that looks like mine. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. My backyard is, though. <laughs> Front yard looks great. <laughs> Don't let bitterness be a problem. Let's pray.